School just got out, and I was walking home. On my way, I passed my dad's office where he worked. His friend that I knew was standing outside smoking. He came up to me and said that I was supposed to spend the night at my cousin's because my dad had a heart attack and was in the hospital. He also agreed to give me a ride there, and he would walk me back home, and he would drive me back home. When we got home, I started packing some stuff. I needed for the night, like my toothbrush, my comb, my slippers, my medicine, my flashlight, my clothes, some other stuff, including my umbrella since it was a rainy night, my pillow, my blankets, my sleeping bag, and to not forget my Brian Griffin plush. Once I was all ready, my dad's friend and I took my stuff to the to the back of the to put my stuff in the back of the car. I had to make sure the house was locked and to let my mom know what happened and where I was going. It was a really long drive from my location, a three hour and six minute drive to be exact. To pass the time I played on my phone, about 13 minutes later I got tired and with the thunder and lightning it made me just lean up against the wall, against the seat, co up with my stuff and doze off. When I woke up, we were all, all, only about a minute away. When we got there, I thanked my dad's friend for driving me, collected my stuff and headed inside. Of course though, when I walked inside, I had to always take off my shoes, just leave me and my socks and take my stuff to my cousin Lincoln's room since he had the greatest bunk bed. I looked around to see who was home, but nobody, except for my aunt, was there. Where is everyone, I asked my aunt. She responded with, oh, well, Lincoln is on his way home. Mariah is at her best friend's house. Casper is with Bella out at dinner. And yeah, probably won't be home until around six. Just as she finished talking, my uncle and Lincoln came in. Hey, hey Brian, my uncle said to me. What's up? I said like I normally talk, would talk to him. Lincoln didn't say anything to me. So all he said was, hey, as he walked to use the bathroom. I looked at my watch and it was a quarter to six. Dinner should, be have, dinner should have already been started. I thought, I thought, I asked where's, my, where's dinner? My aunt said that there's some leftover orange chicken and white rice in the bridge. I took the leftover I took the leftovers out and just ate it straight out, out cold. After everyone ate, we had dessert, took our night showers and had a family night movie night type thing. I wanted to watch cops. Not interested, maybe later, Bella said. Like he was saying about Clarence, the Cartoon Network show, since I was the guest. We all agreed and started looking for the show on Hulu. Clarence was on there, but there was only one season and one episode. The season? Unknown. Episode? The Quarantined Area. Release date? December 17, 2013. Now this might be the pilot episode since Clarence actually aired in 2014. Or a year later. The normal intro began, but everyone in the theme looked very sick. At the end, instead of the title card saying Clarence, it read Quarantine. The episode began w with the camera focusing on the outside of Aberdale Elementary School for about a good two and a half minutes. The next clip showed Miss Baker teaching while Clarence and Sumo were playing. What the heck is this shit? I said. Miss Baker walked over to Sumo and Clarence and told them to go to Mr. Reese's office for detention. Clarence and Sumo looked very weird as they stood up. Sumo was just twitching his eye and Clarence didn't say anything. He walked with Sumo out of the classroom. Stack played as Clarence and Sumo were walking down the hall to the detention room. Along the way, Clarence looked very happy as he was banging his hands on the lockers before slamming his hand on the mysterious door. Ooh, Sumo, 
Look at mysterious door, Clarence said in a terrible quality voice. Ah, man, this thing must, uh, must lead to freedom. Where we belong, Sumo said. Sumo static played as the sign was blurred out. This must be a fun room called Quarantine. That must mean fun, Clarence said in a demonic voice. Sumo opened the door. Clarence and Sumo walked in, and the room was dark. There must be some kind of light switch or circuit breaker around here, Sumo said. Oh my god, I am scared. I'm I am scared of what's going to happen, Casper said. Pretty sure it's just going to be a good place, I hope, I said while cuddling up with Brian. Eventually the light turned on due to Cl Clarence, and I couldn't believe what everyone was seeing. It was a room, but not any room. It was a room that had dead bodies of children, baskets, and hooks hanged or just laying on the ground with realistic blood stains all over the place. I grabbed a bag off the couch and puked in it because I puked from the sight of blood. My cousins were just disgusted. The scene then showed Sumo and Clarence playing and touching the dead bodies. Stag played with a red text title card saying, It's time for the infection to spread. After Stag went away, it showed Sumo coughing up real blood. Sumo, you okay? Clarence asked, before puking his guts out himself. The episode ended with Sumo and Clarence opening the door to the school, passing out as the screen then faded black. This is disgusting, very disgusting. Something I would never want to watch again. My cousin's reaction is very disgusted. For me, I just held my Brian Griffin pl plush against my neck, tipped over with my knees up to my stomach. Repeating over and over again for about a good five minutes. Not scary. Not scary. Fake. Fake.